When I was a young fledgling developer back in the early 80s, practically every game development shop was what would now be called an indie developer. Sure, there were a few big software companies, but most of their games weren't created in-house, and they only served as publishers or distributors for these smaller developers. That's not to say some of these indie developers didn't become institutions themselves. The names of Leo Christofferson, Big Five Software, Scott Adams, not the cartoonist, and others gave us what was, at the time, genre-defining works of wonder that proved home computers had use beyond balancing a checkbook and plotting simple graphs. Today, indie development continues as its own subculture, and an indie title that caught our attention recently was Rogue Summoner. How best to describe it? Take the endearing, flat-shaded, low-poly graphic style of For the King, add to it the move predictability and puzzle mechanics of Into the Breach, throw in a few roguelite elements, and you've got this game. But is there enough meat on these bones to hold your interest long term? Let's find out. Now, before I continue, I'd like to personally thank all those who have subscribed to the channel so far, and if you haven't yet, please consider doing so and sharing our videos with your friends. The premise of Rogue Summoner is that you are just starting out as a novice who is learning what it means to be a Rogue Summoner. The game is presented as a series of dungeons to be delved floor by floor before finally reaching its final boss and the exit. The gimmick is that your summoner cannot traverse a room until it has been fully cleared of its monsters. Each room is randomly generated and holds a combination of monsters and items. The enemy monsters are, of course, the bulk of the challenge, and it's your job to destroy each room's worth by summoning one or more creatures you've unlocked on this dungeon run. Both your monsters and those in the room move and attack in predictable patterns, making this game fall more into the puzzle category than the tactical. In each themed dungeon, the rooms will often be strewn with barriers, buff and debuff zones, treasure chests, and more that throw some extra tactical depth into the mix and serve to keep the gameplay more varied. You begin each dungeon run with a single monster's essence, and that gives you the ability to summon it. And upon clearing a room in which you've killed a new monster type, you can acquire its essence as well. Kill 10 of any kind of monster and you'll unlock its bestiary entry. Here's how the battling is done. Once done studying the room puzzle, you will place one or more of your unlocked monsters into the room. Enemy monsters always seem to get the first attack, so in my play I positioned mine where they can attack without first being attacked themselves. Where the enemy attack will land is plainly spelled out on the game board with a hatched red overlay you see here. From that point you have two choices. You can either play out the room turn by turn, affording you the opportunity to summon new creatures, mana permitting at any time, or you could select Rush All Turns to force your starting creatures to fight to the death. Although taking the latter approach rewards you a 50% premium on rewarded mana, Losing all of your summons will result in a game-ending wipe. So choose this option carefully. So what does progression look like in Rogue Summoner? Well, as is the style, all progression is limited to the active dungeon run. That means any advancement you make in the game will come down to you learning the patterns, the monsters, their skills, strengths, and weaknesses. As an aside, I personally prefer games with some sort of permanent gained advantage. Give me useful unlocks or permanent boosts. I can get failures with no benefit outside of games. During that run, as you gain experience, you'll level up and have the option to upgrade your character in a few ways, such as more inventory space or increased stats. In my play experience so far, I found it useful to expand the mana pool first, allowing more summons per room. Also in that run, you'll collect more monster essences, potions with a variety of effects, and runes that serve as spells. After you clear each room, you'll be able to walk through it and interact with the remaining items, including treasure chests. 
These chests may contain the aforementioned potions and ruins, or even a useful item like a Ring of Revival that grants you a do-over if you fall. Or a magic key that can take you directly to a floor's exit room. While the game is very solid and reasonably priced, there are a few things that, in my opinion, keep it from standing out. The main thing this game sorely needs is some form of metagame. You know, let me unlock and bring a starting item with me. Being able to depend on a favored rune around which a playstyle can be developed really adds a whole new dimension to the game. I'd also like to be able to level up my creatures by either collecting duplicates or fulfilling certain challenges. Perhaps some kind of permabuff could result. If any of this exists in the game, I've yet to find it. Again, as a first release, Rogue Summoner is a solid title. No, it won't set the world on fire, but it can scratch that roguelite puzzle itch. And in a world where the barrier to entry into development has become so low, saying that there's an indie game that you'll come back to again is pretty good praise. Rogue Summoner is the first game from Gamecraft Studios. It's available on Steam and Itch.io today for $12.99, and for a low price is well worth the look if you're into roguelites and puzzle titles. So that's our review of Rogue Summoner. If you've played it, what was your experience? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Also, feel free to add any questions or suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. It would be greatly appreciated and really helps a lot. Thanks for watching.